Welcome to Satisfactory. My name is Ninos and this is another What is it? It is a it's a guide, it's a tutorial, it's a showcase, it is whatever you want it to be. And uh, what we're seeing here is we are moving away way away from our little city, our steel facility that we looked at before. Some of the upcoming projects we have our green Christmas factory that I showcased before and then I have my next me mega project already starting iron factory that are also showcased and up here we have what we are heading towards our magnificent new aluminium factory so as always when uh, when i have these kind of mega builds then how do i present it in the best possible way for you to get the good sense of both the scope and the looks and the ideas so what i'm gonna do is in this episode and uh, i hope that it's satisfactory for you then uh, but let me know if this uh, this format fits First, we'll take a look at it. Just fly around, taking a look at the factory as a whole. Then we're gonna go into more of a detail on how I designed this, what are the sort of the choices and scales that I, uh, I go through in order to build a factory such as this. And then uh, thirdly, we are going to follow the resources all the way through the factory so we can see how it's all connected. Here we are arriving at our location and going through the factory and going out again in order to reach the station. So this is, of course, a train service station, aluminium, aluminium ingots. Ah, oh, man, you will count how many times I accidentally say it incorrectly, uh, because of course it's called aluminium. So here we have it. Uh, this is uh, the factory sponsored by Tegevaro, and uh, that is, it's built over on Twitch. So if you are interested in seeing me build these kind of things and be part of the design process, then by all means, come on over to Twitch. It is at twitch.tv slash Nilos, and I am streaming there almost every evening at 8 p.m. Central European time, but it is the satisfactory days on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays. Here we have a smelting array. It's a, it, it, I like this. This has uh, the dim lights, the fogginess, uh, combined with the, all the plumes of smoke. It is a really nice, look, you can barely see across the room because of the, the smoke here. And lots and lots of <laughs> awesome things just to eat up all the resources so it always continues to work. Yeah, this uh, factory, also the factory, as you can probably see, it is an octagon and uh, that, is, that has been a bit of a tricky thing to build. I'll show you also how we, we build that. We have up here on the second floor, we of course have the resources coming in. We'll come back to these later, but uh, just giving a sense of this. Uh, this is intentional that I want this to cut through the ceiling because I didn't want all of these. First of all, I didn't want to build it that high, but secondly, I did not want to, to have the smokestacks inside for this. So these are lots of refineries, lots of things coming in. We have resources coming in over from that side, which we'll also take a look at. As you can see, all of these designs are incredibly crisp. And I'm sure some of you goes like, hmm, why is it colored with the Mercedes team colors? Well, that is uh, decided by the community from uh, whoever is sort of sponsoring this factory gets to decide the colors. And then I just make it, it's good because I have no sense of fashion. So I could not come up with the um, more interesting colors than purple. Coming out here, looking at the top, you can see here these lines are completely flush with the ceiling, so that looks really nice. We can see over here we have aluminium coming in, and over from this side we also have another location that we can just dip down to. Uh, here we have some lines coming in, we have some petroleum coke, and we have some water coming in. We'll just look at that, and I'm just going to be flying down. I wonder if, that, if it's actually going to catch me as I go down here. I hope so. This is our petroleum coke plant. Looking very nice, very crisp. Oil is coming in on this line and going through the processing and getting uh, some resin that we'll be junking and then getting all of the coke out here again. Going back up to our factory, as you can see, we have also have our global train line going here, which will then continue all the way around and expand into new areas as we do that. So that was just a visual inspection of the factory. Let's go into the details of how I actually decide how to build this factory. A common question that I get asked is, how do I decide how big I want to build a facility? And that's a really good question. So that's we just come over here. I just really like these views along the side of this uh, factory here. So let's look at that. So what, uh, what I do when I do this, of course I want to build an aluminium power plant, or not power plant, aluminium plant, and I want to build it big. So the first thing I do is I figure out where I have resources on the map, and that's what we do with a clean little ping, and then we start figuring out what we have available. Ooh, more gifts. 
If you're watching this outside of Christmas, then these, this must be annoying to look at. All right, what do we have here? We have on the map, we have three different locations. This turns out to be a pure, a pure, and a normal. So if I then say, okay, this is the absolute maximum I can get in this area. There are, of course, many more aluminum uh, on the map, but I don't want to build it so big that I can't really cope when never really get done with it. So I start looking at this and go, okay, what do we have available? Well, we have in uh, all of this available when if I get all of it in, it is an bauxite, then I will have, if I in the late game look at a tier three miner, then that can get all the way, I can get all the way up to 900, I guess. But the best belt is capped at 780. So I'm gonna have 780 plus 780, the two pure ones, plus the normal ones can go up to 600. So that means this facility should be geared toward 2160 bauxite coming in. So that's our first design criteria here. That's it, 2160 bauxite coming in. And then we look at at recipes here, Alumina solution. That's the first step of the process. And we have a certain different options. We have the standard recipe, which has an excess of silica, which is not great because then you have to manage the silica or we have uh, the the pure one. And that is, <clears throat> no, it's like, is this the pure one or the stop one? I can't remember the names of it, but uh, that's the one we want because it's much cleaner recipe. It's also more effective, actually, 10 to 12 or 10, 12 to 12. So more effective. That means we're going to do this one. Great. So now we go over here and do some calculations and say, OK, if I have just land completely, if I have 2160 bauxite and two, then I need 2160 water, that's kind of a lot. And that gives me 2592 alumina solution. Great. So we do need to look at the alumina solution and that can go into uh, aluminum scrap. Here we have two recipes again. And at this point I'm looking at these and go, okay, um, if I multiply this by three, then it'll be 12, so they're comparative. And this one would be 18. So the alternate recipe is actually more effective, efficient, effective larger output for same input that's more effective and the cost is petroleum coke so it's mainly the, the efficiency gain or effectiveness gain is not very big that's not really the deciding factor but what is really the deciding factor in this context is do i want to get coal or do i want to get petroleum so let me look at what i have if i look at the coal location nearby also then i would have to need, need like i need like a lot of coal <clears throat> because we are getting 2,592 alumina. That's, and I would need half of that in terms of coke, or in terms of coal. And if I look at the map, I have these here. They're not exactly nearby. The other ones are there, there, and there. So it's further away, and I would need 1,300 coal coming in in order to sort of to feed it. So it's decided for me easy that it's going to be the alumina uh, the, the, the the petroleum coke version because petroleum coke come comes from heavy oil and heavy oil i can get that pretty easily because we are near the supposedly or the so-called gold coast so it's pretty close to get it to get it and this is what we see up down there i'm getting it from at that point over there it is of course a fair distance away but since I'm already needing to get to the water anyway, then this is seems to be a convenient place. I can take it there, make a little coke, petroleum coke facility, get the petroleum coke in. And also, if we look at the petroleum coke, it's not actually that much petroleum coke. 864 per minute. That's not, not a lot. It's, it's just two belts coming in. Not a big deal. And then when I count that backwards, then let's have a look at this uh, coke. Here, I get 12 from that so if we take the 864 divided by 12 multiplied by 4 there we go 288 heavy oil and let me look at the heavy oil heavy oil residue comes from where is it where is it that one so it's only in turn going to be using 240 crude oil 
to build all this. And then I have a bit of resin that I just uh, put in a an awesome sink. So that's that's actually not a big deal. It's a, that's also what you can see down there. It's a quite a small facility. So already now I'm I'm pretty pretty confident about my choices here. We cho choose the pure one here. We choose the petroleum coke here, and then for the last parts that we need to get it into the uh, aluminium ingot. There we go. Then we have two options. We can either do the standard recipe, which requires the silica. I suppose you could take some of the silica you got originally if you used the original recipe and then recycle it here and then supplement it with more silica and it's just awful, awful, awful because you do not want to use your precious quartz for something as trivial as aluminium. So instead, we're going to use this one, the sloppy, pure, I can't remember what it's called, but this one, two to one, it's not as effective. This is six to four. This is less effective. This is a two thirds efficiency and this is only 50%, but this is so much easier that I just want to make it because then I can just throw it into a smelter without any problems and then convert my, what I'm building here. Uh, by the way, when the previous recipe here, this one, when we add the Coke, we get 4,320 scrap per minute and then some excess water. We take the 4,320 scrap and make it into 2,160 ingots, which is surprisingly, or maybe not, exactly the same as bauxite. So we have a one-to-one -one recipe, one-to-one -one ratio between incoming bauxite and outgoing ingots. That's actually quite neat with this uh, combination of recipes. And also we have some water. So we have a challenge here that I get some excess water that I have to deal with, but I also need like a stupid amount of water here. So what it actually means is I only need to get the net difference in water inbound, which will be 2160 minus 1512, 648. Now 648 water is totally manageable. And that's also what I'm what we're seeing here. I have a total of down there uh, we can see, can't probably see it from here. I only have like three of those. I get 360 in on each of these pipes just to make sure that I have enough. And that basically now we have designed how I want to do it. And then the only challenge is just getting, figuring out how many facilities. I want to make something that's symmetrical inside this octagon. So what makes sense for me is to make 16, 16 and 80. And that means everything is going to be slightly overscaled. 16 refineries will actually service or be able to consume 2,400 bauxite. So that's, and then if I make 16 and 16, this one is the, if I wanted to just, uh, uh, no, here. If I was calculating it, how it was, let's actually do that. Let, right, let's go to production, refinery. I know I can build one here. Let's build it and look at the sloppy alumina solution. Uh, that's the first one, yes. This takes 200. So if I have 16, 16 of those, I can actually cons over consume a lot. This is over a lot, but there is a really big advantage to having these at a one-to-one -one ratio. So obviously I can scale this down. I'm gonna scale down to 75. That means it gets into 150 each of those. And let's get uh, 150 times 16. That's 2,400, yes. And then over here on the other one, then we get the other recipe here just to take a look at it, just to see what it works. It is this one. And this is gonna get scale up to 100. It takes 180 alumina solution, which is what we output from the other one after we uh, scaled it down to 75. And that means it is a ratio if I scale the first one down to 75 and the second one at 100%, and then we have it. But let's go back. This one consume, this one outputs 105 water. So if we have a one-to-one -one relationship between, uh, no sugar cane, thank you very much. There, there, that's how I do the empty hands. As you always see me running around with empty hands, so I get 105. If I switch it back to the original formula, uh, the one we were looking at before, the sloppy alumina, get it down to 75, although it doesn't update here, then it will output 180, which is what the other one required, and the output water will be 150. So that means, no, the requirement of water will be 150. So I require 150 water per pair of refineries, and I'm outputting 105. So that means I net need, need 45 for each pair of refineries. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So then that's all that done. And then I need to get it in here to the smelters. And we will see that there are some constraints that come from uh, come from the 
uh, belt capacity and pipe capacity, so we'll need to do that. Let's follow the resources, because that's a great part, that's the third phase of this, now that we sort of understand what recipes we're using, and some of the design challenges of recycling water, for example, which will absolutely always be a challenge, and uh, some of the constraints with our inputs. So what we have here is, this is what we get inbound. Of course, if you can see here, the belts are not full, and the reason why they're not full is because I don't have turbo motors, so I can't upgrade to tier three, uh, to tier three miners yet. It doesn't really matter, it's perfectly fine. That means I'm getting 600 plus 600 plus 300, but when it all is said and done, if what everything is scaled to is 780, 780, and 600. Then I take the 600 up top, and I split it into two times 300. That's of course not what it is right now. And that means for each side I will now have, we'll do it there so you can see the numbers and uh, I'm usually saying numbers wrong. So I get 1,080 in on each side of this, going into a refinery here, each of them requiring 150. So I have eight times 150, that's what they consume. They consume 1200 and I put in 1080. I could scale all of these further down, but I don't really care about it. So what I do is I take this this one here, the one that should be coming in with 180 and then splitting it in on a typical manifold as I always do. And then once I get below here and so that I know that I can put in additional, then I merge the rest of it in on the line and then continue down the line here. Now, obviously, the last ones will not be working at full speed. I don't really mind that at all. It's just the way it is. What uh, what we will do is, um, yeah, so that is the solids, the bauxite coming in. Let's look at the other side of it, because this is definitely the most, most complicated part. Let's actually take one that's a bit further down here. Eh, where are they? There, that's better. I want one that empties pretty cleanly. So here we have it, 150, 150. And how do I make sure that it gets 150 in? Well, if I look at it from sort of continue the process, I am feeding the 180 alumina solution directly into the next one, which is going to be exactly 180. So they will be completely aligned. They will make a lot of aluminum scraps, like 300 per minute. That's a lot. And then have the excess water as well. We get the petroleum coke in here. On one line, again, manifold pattern, and then it goes out, and that goes the aluminous scrap. This is interesting because if they're working fully, then they are going to output 300 each, and that means I can only combine two of these on a belt. And I can also say that I've made a bit of a, a miss here, um, because of course, when I built the aluminum plant, I did not have my, did not have aluminum, aluminum belts, damn it. Made the mistake. There, and there and there and there. These have to be updated as well. Here, here, here and here. Good. So that is now, well, that updated. So you can see here, these are outputting 300 and two of those combined into a single belt here. That single belt will output 600. And of course I need to do it on the other side as well. But what are we gonna do about the water? The water here comes out and as you can see on this one, it gets up here but it flows and it goes all the way back to this location. And then I have put in a valve here that can take everything. That means this guarantees that it flows this way, but it never flows the other way. That means hopefully this should be uh, not be keep, keep getting full. This one I have limited to 45, so it can at maximum input 45 inbound. And this one will then every time it completes, you can see here, then it will suck in another 10 and those will come both from this one and from that one. And what this guarantees is that it will always be possible to, for the electrode aluminum scrap to output the water because it outputs into this pipe and this pipe cannot overflow. If I did, so let's just look at it. If I did not have this, this would fit in with, with uh, 45 all the time and it would work as long as it's always working, then it would sort of be in a balance. But if for whatever reason, the belts got stuck just for a minute, then the outbound, the, the, the water coming from the main line would fill up, not just in here, but also in this one, which means that the whole pipe system would be completely full 
and that means it would be impossible for this one for this one to get rid of the water and if it can't get rid of the water then it gets stuck and then we have a deadlock of the entire system but i made each of these like its own little loop and that's why it was so important for me to have a one-to-one -one ratio between these two even though it means that i scale this down to 75. so one-to-one -one ratio means that i get the 105 is recycled plus added 45 through this valve and that means it's continued to work i think it's a pretty ingenious solution of course there's a lot of pipes here you can see a lot of pipes a lot of valves every single place but it does make sure that it is robust in terms of, uh, of only using what is needed because i was contemplating other solutions such as getting this one in and then having a coal power plant that or a coke power plant that just burned off the rest just to consume the water but i really didn't like that solution this is a much cleaner solution so that i only need to bring in instead of bringing in the 2160 water then i only need to bring in 864 water per minute and that's much more manageable so what happens uh, when we look at this part this is not needed to be updated but these are needed to be updated so let's get those updated to level fives because they are absolutely needed we want to make we want to make sure that this design is correct and it is yes it's good uh, i don't need to upgrade the one between these two because that's not happening and i will update the four undergrounds and i'm pretty sure i did that on the below ground so what you're seeing here Funny enough, nothing really, nothing much is working. And that's because the Illumina solution here is starving just a bit. And if I go to the other side, that looks a bit more impressive. This is because this comes in when I don't, I don't have the belt saturated. It's only the first ones that will be fully saturated. And then the last one will not really be. Here, that goes down into the floor. Let's jump downstairs and then take a look at what happens below. Because that's where we have the smelting going on. And we jump out and we come down here and let's take this location as and you see these are all level fives great so here we have a lot of aluminium scrap coming in in nice little buckets each of these is coming at an in at a range rate of up to 600 and it comes in let's take that one which is churning along here really good coming in here and then going into a little build uh, I can't see a damn thing stop smoking here comes in 600 and each of these can consume 60 so that is 10 five on other side this means and it takes two in one out that means if I get 600 in here that goes 300 on this side 300 on that side these 300 becomes 150 going out here and if I look at this one there's another 150 plus another 150 so I have the, this belt I have 300 so now we're looking at one uh, 150 plus 300 plus this one is also getting 300 so I split it here this is a splitter so it goes both ways and that means I can now get 600 that way and 600 that way it's of course slightly less because I'm scaling I'm building the whole thing such that it would be able to to, uh, to to work on 2400 inbound but I'm only having 2160 inbound so everything will be slightly uh, slightly idling once in a while this goes in and that means I got 600 this way this is only 450 so it's only at this point here that it's 60 and that in here is fast enough so what I've done is I am now taking a smart splitter that smart splitter is of course saying anything moving forward because that goes onwards and then any residual goes out here it is deliberate that i have not upgraded this to a mark 5 belt uh, there's a my file this is not upgraded as mark 5 belt because you know if i'm already throwing away 480 per minute then i don't really need to throw away anymore and that's times four we're getting quite a lot of tickets because of all the aluminium that i'm now junking here if we go to the other side of course this one goes on into the next and the whole thing here because i built it with 80 in mind then it's a little cluster here of 10 that serves one belt and i have eight belts coming in each with up to 600 on each and again here we have it and you can see here this belt comes in as well so i have one two belts here and then over here i also have two belts where are they going well they're going below seems like a good place to go and let's see if I okay going below 
merging in here. That's my sort of structure. I actually really like that to sort of support structure. And we have the two belts going from this side and two belts going from that side. They're going in and then they're cleverly going back up again. Let's go over here. And where are they going in? Surprise, surprise, they're coming in straight into the freight platform. And this freight platform is super happy and really is excited to be delivering <laughs> aluminium ingots to the rest of the network whenever that's possible. But this might be, you might go like, but, but, but you're not making aluminium products. You're only making aluminium ingots. Why, what, what about aluminium sheets that take copper ingots and aluminium, uh, al aluminium casing, for example? Aluminium casing, you can also make it more efficient here by also adding uh, copper ingots. I'm not going to do that. That's that's a giant waste of copper in my opinion. Copper is kind of scarce, so want to use it for things that are necessary. But this one definitely needed. So how are you going to do that? Well, I was contemplating it and what I've come to the conclusion is that I actually don't need aluminium sheets in my train network. Now I do need it for uh, for belts, Mark 5 belts, so I do need to craft some, but I don't need it for any product moving forward. Anything that needs alu alclad aluminium sheets has an alternate recipe that use aluminium casing. So my intention is that in my train network I'll have iron ingots, copper ingots, keterium ingots, and aluminium ingots, but not steel ingots for some odd reason. And those will be sent into the next factory, and then at that factory I'll be making whatever I need. So for example, I'll bring the Caterium ingots, the reason why I'm bringing Caterium ingots into a location and not Caterium wire is because of the four to one ratio. And that means it's gonna be more belts if I want to transport. And I'll unload from a station much slower if I have to unload the, the wire. Uh, when it comes to copper and iron, then they are used for so many things that it just makes more sense for me to keep them in ingot form in the future. And now I haven't built any of that. For steel though, I decided that I wanted to make it into ink, into pipes and beams. And maybe that's not good. I don't know. Maybe that, but that's how it is right now. But in for aluminium ingots, I definitely want to make sure that it's only aluminium ingots that comes out so that when I get it into another location, it'll be converted into casings and only casings with the exception of the future hub where it will be converted also with adding some ink, some copper ingots into the sheets that we need on exclusively for unlocking re unlocking resources in the hub and for um what is the other thing i said yeah for mark 5 belts and we, we do need a lot of mark 5 belts but still it's not a big deal so there we have it this is uh, basically our build and this is now ready to service unfortunately you can say that we don't have anything right now that needs this you can say the same thing with the steel and you need to get the steel and it goes into the network the train network this one is helping us make the Mark V belts that are super necessary for a lot of things we need, but also when it also allows us to unlock a lot more resources, resources in the hub so we can get started on the next thing. And before we wrap up, then what I just want to show you or just want to talk a bit about or just let you know about sort of my next mega project, and that's going to be a hub that will be serviced by trains, trucks and future drones where I will be able to pick up anything as well as have a train that I can summon, hopefully, that um, and that train is uh, isn't going to be like a, a builder train, if we can at all figure out how to do that. So that's going to be one of the massive challenges we have ahead of us. And uh, I think, I hope that you want to follow along. If you want to be part of the design and yell at me for silly things, then come on over to Twitch. I'm streaming, as I said, Monday went... Uh, I'm pretty, pretty much every day. I mean, almost at least, almost every evening. But it's uh, satisfactory on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time. Otherwise, of course, there will always be highlights and showcases here on YouTube for whatever we decide to build. And uh, that will be sort of how I continue this series. If you have like ideas for things that you'd like to see me do more of in in on YouTube, such as like tutorials, showcases, that kind of thing, by all means, let me know. But it's uh, it is meant as a tutorial and showcase, not as a as a full let's play, because there's so much, so many things that have to be done between sessions, and that's what we do on Twitch, where we just hang out and chat and talk about all the things as well. So that that's going to be why there's a there's a difference between the different uh, different episodes or different formats, and I think that it makes a lot of sense. 
there, there. Then we'll just turn on. Did I turn it on or turn it off? Turn on self-driving. There we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this little uh, showcase of our beautiful octagonal... Uh, yeah, octagonal aluminium plant and they uh, are interested in following along. If you are, be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you found it useful. Also, let me know in the comment section if there's something more or less different that you want to see in the base or you have good ideas, bad ideas or uh, things that I didn't do correctly. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care and as always, stay effective.